Hello guys, it's me, Houston Texan Fan123, and here's my review of the iPod Touch 4G. I know this is pretty late because the iPod Touch 5, 5 is coming out, and also it's really, to me, I think the iPod Touch 5 will be more of an update though. So I'm just doing this. Um, I don't think there'll be new firmwares really. It'll be more of an update for the iPod, more features, and it'll be much awesomer. But I don't think there'll be really a new iPod. There will be one. A new iP there will be a new iPod Touch, but it won't be a big change. My first thing I want to tell you is the tech specs. Its height is 4.4 inches. So from here to here is 4.4 inches. The width is 2.3 inches. The depth is 0.28 inches, which is really, really tiny. This thing is skinny. You know, and then the weight is 3.56 ounces. And this thing, the iPod Touch 4G, is literally, from compared to the others, this is literally like nothing. It's so small. The old iPods used to have a curved back, but the new iPod has a flat back. So now, it will actually stand flat. But with the old iPods, it would rock, like if it was a little higher, and it would rock a little bit, because it was a back curved. Well, the iPod Touch 5G comes in three different capacities. Is 8 gigabyte, 32 gigabyte, and 64 gigabyte. If this is only if you're using this iPod only for apps, nothing else, like if you have another MP3, this would work perfectly fine with 8 gigabyte. If you're not the heavy downloader, but for me on the other hand, I'm a heavy downloader. I use this for this is my first iPod, which is pretty sad to say, even though because iPods have been around for a while. This is my first iPod, so I use this for everything really. But so I got the 32 gigabyte model because I don't need a 64 because I'm not like one of those people who has a million songs. I don't have and I'm not buying a gift card literally like every few days. So this is 32 gigabytes. The display is a 3.5 inch diagonal display. Let me put in my touch code. Okay, the display is anything lit up, and the diagonal is 3.5 inches exactly. The resolution is 960 by 440 pixels, I mean, sorry, 960 by 640 pixels at a resolution, excuse me, the resolution at 30, 326 pixels per inch. So it's pretty good pretty okay for a device like this. It's not like a computer with HD because it's not meant to be that. It's meant to be something portable that works. It's cool. So then the camera, it can record when held to the side. It can record in 720p HD for up to 30 frames per second with audio. Still photos can be 960 by 720. But that's if you use the back camera because the back camera is where everything, every like tech, everything tech is in. But with the front-facing camera, it's less. It's a smaller. It's less quality. It's at VGA quality photos and videos for up to 30 frames per second. So it's less quality, but it's perfectly fine for some of the other features that I'll get into later. And it's tap to control gestures for the iPod video or stills. And the i in the photo and video is geo has geotagging over Wi-Fi. Um, one thing I was going to tell you about photos is with the iPod Touch 5G rumors, it's supposed to have, or at least you actually know this by now, because it's supposed to be coming within like one or two weeks from now, but there will be a button right here with the lock screen. This slide to unlock will be smaller, and right here there will be a button for cameras. So say like nowadays, say if you're on a trip and you're taking pictures with your iPod, and you see something, and you don't, you won't have enough time to unlock your iPod, go through everything, and find the camera app, and load it, and then take a picture. The thing probably may have ended already. But for those run-of-the-mill moments where it's so quick, you turn it on, press the button, it turns on the camera, and you take a picture, and you're done. So you're quick. Then the input is a 30-pin dot connector, which is... That's for the charging and the sync cable. The headphone jack is 3.5mm stereo headphone mini jack. 
and it has a built-in speaker. So if you want to watch movies with your family and friends, you can do that. But I wouldn't recommend for a lot of people because it doesn't have. It's loud when every when there's nothing going on around you. But when you're like in a crowded place, you can barely hear the speaker at max. But this does have a microphone, a built-in microphone that a little. The little dot right there, that's the microphone. The audio frequency response is 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Audio format supports AAC 8 to 320 kilobeats per second. I'm not sure. Protected AAC from iTunes Store. HE AAC MP3 MP3 VBR audible. Aud um, uh, let's see, an Apple Looseless and AIFF and WAV, and it's user configurable to the max volume. So, say you want the max volume, like you're not somebody who likes loud stuff, so you can put the max volume to be pretty low. Or you can put the max volume full volume. So, then the external buttons it has the lock button up here, the sleep wake lock button. Then the volume buttons, which it, from the old iPods, it used to be a volume rocker where you can go up, down, up, down with your fingers. Now it's two separate buttons. So say, oh, I need the volume up. Click up. I need the volume down. You press down. Then there's the home button. So nothing's changed there. It comes with the Apple headphones we all know and some hate, some love. It just depends on what type of person you are. The, um, let's see. In the box, you get the iPod Touch, the headphones dot connector and the quick start guide I don't have that with me but it has that it has three different types of se se um, sensors it has a three axis gyro so when it turns you can, it can tell like where you're turning it has the accelerometer and it has an ambient light sensor which when you're in a lot of light you can see like a purple circle right there that's the ambient light sensor, but it only works when you're in a really light, you can only see when it's a really light, well lit place. The battery supply, supply for video, it can do 7 hours of non-Wi-Fi video and 40 hours of audio, um, like when it's on lock but not it on, but only at 100%. It has a built-in rechargeable lithium-ion battery. And then the charging times, fast charge is about two hours, so it's the quickest you can charge it for it to be pretty good, and that's 80%. But then to get full 100%, it takes four hours, which is pretty long. But hopefully in the future, there's still like some people, some college students who created a possible new quicker battery. Hope that comes out. The system requirements for your computer, you need to have iTunes 10.1 or later. The USB 2.0, uh, so you can charge it and also use it for a computer to sync. Either Mac, Mac OS X version 10.58 or later, or PC with Windows 7, Windows Vista, or Windows XP Home or Professional SP3 or later. The broadband internet access requires and it has fees that may apply. And it has different things. Environmental requirements. Operating temperature best 32 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty much about it. And iOS 5 will be coming out in a few days or weeks. Hopefully not months. So they'll give you that info. I'll give you that update when it comes out. So the first thing with the iPod. Some people don't have a lock screen. I mean don't have a lock button. I do. I have When you turn it on. Some people don't, I mean, some people don't have key lock, but I do, so let me do that. Off screen, I don't want you guys getting access to my iPod if you, like, steal it or something. Which I don't think you'll do, but. So you can change your background. I have the Beats logo, because I love Beats. It's also my lock screen. The Beats audio, I yet, I'm yet to have some, but I really want to get some, because they're really awesome headphones. So, um, you can have one thing with the I iOS 4, is you got FaceTime, so you can stream a video and record, like, you can talk to your friends with a Wi-Fi area connection, and you can talk to, communicate with them. Also, you have a calendar, which is standard. You also have photos and a camera. 
You have a built-in YouTube app. Let me show you. Okay. Camera might not be the best. Oh, let me change the brightness. Sorry, I've taken like almost all of my time just telling you about specs. I would probably just make a part two of this video. Is that good or lower? There. So you have the calendar, photos, camera, YouTube, stock market, maps, weather, notes, um, utilities, iTunes, App Store, Game Center, and settings. Game Center is pretty cool. You can play games with your friends, or and it shows different Game Center games. No. Also, you have on every page where every swipe, you have music, ma email, st um, Safari, and videos. So then, you also have contacts, which for some reason I put on the next page. Let me have that there in the because I don't know if they can allow me. Then you have a bunch of apps. You can have like a bunch of apps. I have a lot. You can see these are all my apps. Then you also like. Also, you can have a search. So say, oh, I don't remember what I can do in that. I want to search the internet quicker. You go here. You can type in. I'll type in my e Houston. Oh, sorry. You can search for different apps here, apps, music, contacts, anything like that. You quicker than having to go through the whole iPad and find it. So let's t you can even search the internet. I'm gonna just type in random stuff. It has search web or search Wikipedia. So if you like Wikipedia, you can search Wikipedia. But then they have some apps. Like say I want to find iHeartRadio, which is an awesome app if you like listening to live radio. I and it's the first one that loads up. Click search. The top hit iHeartRadio app. And then you have you can have multiple pages of apps. You can also change the background of your iPod for your home screen by going to settings. Go to either you can um what's it called? Wallpapers. You can either change, use Apple's built-in wallpapers, which is the standard for app for the iPod Touch for the new iPods. Not lock screen. I meant to do that for my home screen. Set for both. There. Now that's my home screen. The water droplets. I mean, so that's been this has been my review of the iPod Touch 4G. But one quick thing I want to tell you, I forgot to tell you this before. If you have an iPod Touch 4G, you need to really have some good cleaning products in your house. Whether you use a, I use a multi-surface cleaner just to shine up the iPod. But one thing I hate is look at all these scratches. This is from constant wear and tear of the iPod. It's not like I've been taking my iPod and throwing it down or taking like a pen and scratching on the iPod. Or even just using anything. I'm not intentionally doing this. I'm just keeping this in my pocket, taking it out. Even cases can mess up your iPod. I'm using the Griffin Outfit Ice. It's really nice. This is my brother's case, though. But it's a great case. It's not going to mess up your iPod. But you have to be careful what cases you buy. So the back oh, is really sensitive. So I just use some. I clean smudges up, but I can't clean streaks. Then also, same with the front. So this has been Houston Texan Fan One Two Three signing out. I want to tell you guys to comment, rate, and subscribe. And if you got any questions, like I said, comment. Um, hopefully subscribe so you can be updated. And I just want to tell you that. So bye.